Good morning Interweb, this is follow up to my last video, Fantasy Mining, where metals are found on Fantasy World. If you have not seen that video, go check it out, otherwise none of this is going to make any sense whatsoever. As a geologist, this is very well researched and I approve. Thank you, that means a lot coming from a geologist. I was worried about this video because there's just, it's such a rich field and I had to get rid of so many details and explanations in order to make it a short video that I was afraid that I wouldn't be doing geology just so I'm glad you enjoyed. Thank you. So why is the title where metals are found if you don't get into anything made of metal until about five minutes in? That is entirely fair. Although it's worth noting that like once you've placed all the metals you're going to need some sort of fuel to be able to work them so you're going to need to know where your coal is or your oil or your gas etc. What about fictional materials? How do you decide how those should be placed? So what I would do is I would make a fictional material analogous to a real world material. So if this fictional material, say Fantastium for example, is derived from living organisms, then make it crop up in the same areas that coal and oil and gas crop up. If it's derived from volcanic activity, have it crop up with the ores. Alternatively, your Fantastium could come from off-world, so meteors for example, so they can go pretty much anywhere. And also if your Fantastium comes from like a somewhat fantastical place, like say the water or the air, look into how we extract resources from those areas and make Fantastium extraction something similar. So think like desalination of seawater, instead of getting salt plus drinkable water, you get Fantastium plus drinkable water. Or think about how we generate nitrogen from the air. Perhaps on your world, Fantastium is generated from the air in a process similar to nitrogen generation. So in summation, make your fictional resource analogous to a real world resource and have it crop up in those locations. Any resources for ratios or occurrence frequencies? Not that I know of, and even if such resources were to exist, I think I'd be inclined to like not listen to them, to break away from science in this instance, because natural resource distribution is a really great opportunity to do a bit of culture building, and I suppose a bit of geopolitics. Like if I want country A, for example, to be a dominant player on the world stage, and it happens to have an oil reserve present, I might make that oil reserve particularly abundant. Even if the science were to strictly say that it shouldn't be so abundant, doesn't matter. I think culture building and geopolitics takes precedence in this instance. Plus it's really fun to get creative in this area. I have a question about BIF deposits. When you say old mountain chains, does that mean areas that used to be mountains millions of years ago and aren't anymore? When I say new mountain chains, think Himalayas, Andes, etc. When I say old mountain chains, think the Appalachian Mountains. New mountains are mountains that are under construction currently on active plate boundaries. And old mountains are mountains that were on active plate boundaries long ago, but now aren't. So no new mountain building is occurring and they're becoming eroded over time. New mountain, think of new mountains as being like triangular and think of old mountains as being kind of dome shape. How many years into the past should the past be? I would be reluctant to assign a specific numeric value to the past it's too specific for our purposes. I usually think in terms of present, non-present, deep past maybe, without any specific uh, values on that. The way I think when I kind of build the world is what's occurring now and what occurred before. It doesn't matter how long ago that was. These two land masses once were touching and formed mountains, then they moved away, those mountains eroded, and now newer mountains are forming on plate boundaries. That's kind of how I think. I don't think in terms of 300 million years ago, the land masses were doing this and then they moved away, etc. It's too specific, at least in, in my opinion. Quick question, if my world has sea people, is it possible for them to mine in the sea? So in general, underwater cultures will tend to get locked in a stone age indefinitely. Why? Because fire. You need fire for technological advancement to create the tools necessary to mine, for example, and fire it doesn't really work underwater. So left to their own devices, your underwater culture will not be a mining culture. They'll get at ore minerals by scraping them off the surface of black smokers, but that won't be very economically significant. Now, if you have a, another culture on your world that does have access to fire, maybe your sea people can trade with them. And once they have the tools necessary to start digging, yeah, mining underwater totally works. 
I can think of a lot of cool stories that can arise out of the interaction and potential conflict between fire people and sea people. So those were some A's to your Q's. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, Edgar out.